this video is a video on a topic that was requested by somebody that commented on one of our YouTube videos. Um, they wanted to ask about how you do the setup of iSCSI, which is I-S-C-S-I. Um, so here I've got a TVS-H1288X, and this one's running QUTS Hero, but it would be the same process whether you're using um, our QTS operating system or QUTS Hero. Um, I'm going to start this in the Storage and Snapshots application, um, and down at the bottom here there is a app that will open up in a new window, which is called iSCSI and Fibre Channel. We're only going to concentrate on the iSCSI side of things today, so if I click that, it's going to open up a uh, separate application and it says, do you want to launch the quick configuration wizard? Sometimes the first question it may ask is that the iSCSI services are disabled. Do you want to enable them? Uh, you'd have to say yes to that. I've already got them enabled, so it hasn't asked me that one. Um, so I'm going to say OK to launching the quick configuration wizard. So it's just telling you exactly what's happening. Now, the purpose of using iSCSI is really to have a network-based uh, lump of storage, uh, but it appears on the server pretty much like a, a local drive or whatever you connect it to. It looks like a local drive. So some software out there um, will only work with local drives, but not network shares, for example. Um, they need the native file system of the operating system you're using. Uh, one example would be things like uh, Microsoft Exchange. Haven't used it in a few years, but it used to not let you put uh, the mailbox stores on a network attached storage share, uh, but you could get around that by mapping an iSCSI volume in instead. Um, and it would think it's a, a local drive instead. And it works just fine there because then it's all NTFS for the Windows environment. Um, so that's what I'm going to show today. I'm going to show creating a LUN, uh, an iSCSI LUN. Uh, volume um, and I'm also going to connect it to a Windows Server uh, 2019 just to show you how you connect it. It's really really easy simple easy, easy and simple to do. So I'm going to click next and now it wants a name so let's just call this uh, YouTube for example. It will populate the target alias box for you. You can change this if you want. Now this box here is saying allow clustered access to this target. Now it's on by default. Um, you really only need this ticked if you're using it in something that can do clustered access uh, to the same file system, such as something like VMware. Um, I'm going to leave it enabled because I'm not going to connect to it from anywhere else. Um, there's a few um, extra settings down here for CRC and checksum if you want them. I'm going to leave everything here as default. Uh, you can set up authentication if you want, so that if you want a username and password to connect to the uh, iSCSI volume, then you can set that up. I'll leave mine blank for now. Um, just confirm everything's done and at the bottom it's going to create a LUN and map it to this target So this is going to be effectively the identifier the way you connect to it So I'm going to leave that ticked and I'm going to click apply Now it moves on to how big it's going to be So I'm going to say I'm going to put it on the larger storage pool and let's say it's going to be 500 gigs um, You can change the settings down below as you need them whether you want dgp on it or alert thresholds things like that um, and depending on the application you're using it for, we have different uh, recommendations of different sizes. I'll just leave it at 64K, so I'm not going to use this for anything. Um, and I'm going to click Create. So just a warning about thin provisioning. That's fine. Click Yes. Uh, so now it's going to go off, create the, uh, the, the iSCSI Learn, create the volume. Um, we can see a progress over here, so it's all setting itself up. Um, so there we go. Enabled capacity is 500 gig. Everything's done and ready. And if we scroll it down, we can see that that, uh, uh, that iSCSI volume here has been created as well in the pool I chose it to. So that's been created in the background. Um, now you're pretty much done with the NAS side of things. So now everything else would take place on where you want to connect it to. Uh, so here the NAS is on 10.10.0.129. Uh, .10 so that's the only thing I really need to remember. So if I come over to my Windows Server 2019 here, I'm going to open up the uh, iSCSI initiator, so I'm just going to type iSCSI. Now the initiator is really just the connection method of getting uh, connected to an iSCSI LUN. There's a lot of settings that you can do in here. You can get very specific with it. You can do things like MPIO, which is uh, multiple connections to the same volume so that you can have faster access to it. I'm just going to keep it simple today. And in this top box that it's already wanting me to type in is the target. So the target here, I'm simply going to put the IP address um, of the NAS itself. So that's all I'm doing and I'm going to click quick connect. There we go, connected. So it's recognized the YouTube part. I didn't put that there. It's already done that because that's the only iSCSI LUN that's available on this uh, particular NAS. Uh, but that's all done and it's connected. 
Now, if I go down to the uh, this PC view here, we can see there is no extra drives that have appeared. Nothing's popped up saying you've got a new drive or anything like that. Um, so as the NAS was setting it up, it set it up as a, a blank volume, effectively. Um, Windows needs it to be NTFS to use it. Uh, so one way to go about that on Windows Server is open up the Server Manager. You can go to Tools, um, and then in the, the, the Tools menu here, you can um, go through to the Computer Management section, um, and in here is a Disk Management subsection under Storage. So it's already popped up immediately. You must initialize a disk before you can access it. So it's already ticked it, and I'm going to click OK. If I expand that we can see that there is the 500 gig volume that we connected and added. Um, but it still isn't going to be in the computer display because we haven't formatted it, we haven't assigned it a drive letter, so that's still blank. So here I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say I want a new simple volume. Click next, that's the size, yep. Um, which drive letter? So you can assign it whatever you want. Let's just give it Q. I'll click next. What type of format? What do you want to call it? So we can say this is the QNAP drive. Um, NTFS, everything else, leave it on quick format and click finish. So that's formatting and now it's done. We've got the QNAP with the Q. Now if I go back to the uh, computer view, we can see we've got the 500 gig uh, QNAP Q drive. So this is now available, ready to use. I can use this for absolutely anything that I want. Um, so everything that you could do on a normal folder, uh, normal uh, drive, you can do here. If something would only work on directly attached drives, this will work here as well. Um, now, when you go back to the iSCSI um, uh, 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 and Fiber Channel app on the QNAP, you can see that it now says it's connected and you can click for more detail about exactly what's connected to it. So I can see that it's uh, my Windows Server uh, virtual machine that's connected to it on the IP address there ending 127. Um, so that's really it. That's, that's how you set it up. This is now ready and available to use uh, by the Windows Server. So the Windows Server can just use it for absolutely any purpose it needs. Um, although it's network mounted, um, it doesn't show up as a network mounted drive. So if you were to mount a network drive or map a network drive, um, so let's go through here to um, different things on the network. So if I was to open up um, this unit here, the same NAS, but I'll connect to a, a share this time. There we go. Um, so if I was to map this folder here, for example, as a network drive, just as the Z drive there, that's fine. So if we go back to this PC view, we can see that it's in a network location. The, the QNAP Q drive is not in a network location. There's no paths involved. The iSCSI initiator has handled the connection in the background and it now appears as an internal drive. And over here in the uh, disk management, you don't get any disk management for network drives. You don't see it in the list um, because it's a, a, a network path. It's not um, built into the in, into the management of it because it's network. You can't manage a network drive. But because it was a iSCSI one which has now been mounted natively, you can use it accordingly in the same way. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, hopefully that explains a little bit about iSCSI. Uh, things work a little differently with uh, different pieces of software like uh, VMware, for example. Um, it doesn't use necessarily an iSCSI initiator. You have to go edit adapters and things to do that. Uh, but you can uh, mount them in effectively the same way. And if you ever did need the, the full IQN name there, and what you can do is you can go to the properties of the connection and this is copy and pasteable. So you can highlight all of this and copy this if you wanted this specific information, say for mounting just one specific LUN to a specific uh, server, you can copy the exact thing. You don't have to type all this out. You can come here, right click on it and you can copy it. So you can use it that way as well. Okay, if anybody does have any questions, wants to see any other uses for iSCSI or, or anything like that, please do let us know and we'll get back to you as quick as possible. Thanks. Hi, thanks for watching our QNAP video and if you enjoyed the video, why not click like and subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment below. If you have any questions or you would like to see anything content in a future video, why don't you drop Craig and our team an email at youtube underscore uk at qnet.com. See you in the next one!